Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. In this lesson, we're gonna talk about the video tag. Before we get there, I just wanna say that the next three lessons were kind of an afterthought. Uh, the team at Channel 9 thought it would be a great idea to at least introduce you to some of the new HTML5 elements that are gaining support so that you can understand what all the buzz is about. However, to really dig deep and to learn more about these in a real world scenario it would require knowledge of JavaScript and that's not the purpose of this series. There is a fundamental series on JavaScript and jQuery that I created for Channel 9 so please look for that after you finish this series of lessons. So we're only going to talk about the next couple of ideas at a very high level uh, overviewing the ideas, showing quick examples, but not really digging into the into how to actually write the code to make these work. Uh, so in this lesson I'm going to demonstrate the use of the video element in HTML5. There's a corresponding audio element as well for playing audio in your web pages. Once you learn how to use the video element, the audio elements, uh, syntax, the um, uh, the attributes that are available are very similar, so I'm not going to take the time to go through the audio element. Just keep in mind that it's very similar to the video element. The video element allows you to include video in your web pages without requiring a special plugin. Now, in the past, if you wanted to include video for display in your web page, you had to require the user, the viewer of your web page, to download and install a third party plugin like Adobe's Flash Player or the Silverlight plugin by Microsoft. Microsoft. Now this was an impediment to a more open plugin less web which was another goal of HTML5. Therefore the video element was introduced and it required browser vendors to include a video player directly in the browser itself. So from a developer perspective, from a web developer perspective like you and I, the video element is pretty simple. Um, and there are some advanced use cases that require JavaScript. We're just not going to demonstrate those for the purpose of this lesson. But what you want to do uh, to follow along is to download the code that's associated with this video from wherever you're currently streaming the video or wherever you originally downloaded this video from. Inside of that zip folder, there should be a folder called Lesson 18. Inside, there's a before, after, and a work folder. Let's start in the before folder, and I want to copy out the three files that are there. We have the lesson18.html file where, file where we'll do most of our work. There's a mp4 file called 30seconds.mp4, which is simply a video file. It's the first video in this series of lessons. I just made it smaller and only chopped it down to 30 seconds, all right? Just for demonstration purposes. And then we have a poster.jpg image. If you double click on it, you can see that it's just that nice title screen that we've added to all the videos. So what I wanna do is copy these, and I'm gonna put them in our work folder. And I'm going to open up the lesson18.html file in Notepad and you can use any uh, technique that you're familiar with or comfortable with. I'm gonna right click and select open with notepad. And so the process of adding video is very simple. We're just gonna start with a beginning and an ending video element. And then I'm gonna add the source attribute. I'm gonna set that equal to the 30 seconds.mp4. Now, this happens to be in the same directory as our HTML page. So the rules apply if you're using relative paths uh, if, for example, you had the video in, for example, the uh, a videos subfolder, or if it was in a parent directory, for example. Uh, so just be aware that all the things we talked about with regards to relative paths back in lesson number five apply here as well, okay? Uh, but that's all we really need to do. Let's go ahead and save this and then open it up and view it in Internet Explorer. And you'll get this little warning about uh, Internet Explorer restricting uh, the running scripts or ActiveX controls. We're just going to click the Allow Block Content button for now. And you can see that we get the video player displaying in our web page. Now, it's not a very satisfying experience at this point because uh, we need to add some more information. Uh, we can begin the playing of the video if we right click anywhere in this black area and select Play. We can right click and, and say mute the video. We can change the play speed. Uh, however, there's not any way to fast forward. There's no way to pause. Well, I guess we can right click and pause the video and so on. So what we really need to do is add another attribute here. And I'm going to add the controls attribute. When I do that, save our work and then open the page up again. This time, 
when I hover my mouse cursor over, notice that it gives me a control bar, uh, a play button that toggles as a pause button. There's this scrub bar, which I can scrub deeper into the video. I can also uh, mute the playback of the video and adjust the volume as the end user. Great. Now, what happens if the uh, end user doesn't have a browser that supports HTML5 video elements. Well, in that case, what you can do between the open and close video tag or video element is to uh, add some text describing the problem. And here, what I'm going to do is just paste in some text. It says, unfortunately, your browser cannot play the video format. You may right click this link and choose Save As to download this video instead. Okay. In fact, we might want to put that in a paragraph. That might be better. Okay, so this will display instead of the video in those cases where somebody's using an older web browser or a browser that doesn't support our video file format. Okay, and so uh, let's continue on. There are a couple of other things that we can do. We can change, for example, the width and the height of our uh, video player. So I know that if I were to change the width and height to 960 by 540, that it'll keep the aspect ratio the same, but it'll stretch the video to be much larger on the web page, and it does. And you'll notice one thing about this, and I guess this is just kind of important no matter which technology Hello, you welcome. use to embed uh, video into your web pages. Uh, when you encode a video, uh, you are encoding uh, a lot of information about uh, what's going on in the screen right now, and as a result of that, the file size can be quite large. Uh, if you were to change the size of the video encoding and make the, the height and the width smaller, it would require less information to be encoded in the video. Uh, and so the ramification is this. As we take a, sm uh, a video that was encoded for a, a smaller playback experience and we expand it out, we stretch it out, each individual pixel has to cover more space and therefore you get this cloudy effect that you might see uh, if you're playing this back and, and working through this example like I am. Uh, the reverse is true as well. If you have a very large video, something that's been encoded for um, uh, 1280 by 720 or, or even larger, and then you were to reduce the size because you only wanted to take up a small footprint on your web page, you're really uh, encoding more information than is necessary for the playback experience, and you're wasting a lot of bytes and it's going to be slower than it needs to be for the end user. So just be aware of what size you ultimately intend your videos to be played in. Encode them to that correct size and that'll get it closer and uh, sharper for the playback experience, all right? Okay, so let's go ahead and continue trying new things. Like for example, what if we want the video to begin playing automatically as uh, the user begins or loads the web page. Let's just go ahead and refresh. And you can see by adding the autoplay attribute, the video begins playing right away. Hello and welcome to this. And they can still control the exp playback experience. You know what, for now I'm gonna remove the width and the height. And uh, also what I wanna do is remove the autoplay for the moment. And I wanna uh, talk about this poster attribute you can see I'm kind of referring back down here. I have an unordered list of things that we can add. We've already looked at width and height and autoplay. We can use muted if we want the video to start uh, with the muted option chosen or loop the video for continual playback. Uh, there's also this uh, uh, preload. It'll start downloading the video immediately so that it's ready when the user wants to play it, uh, which is a very useful attribute if you're streaming a large video and you don't require them to play it right away. You can at least begin the download process even before they put the play button so there'll be more immediate playback experience. Um, in our case, what we're gonna do is um, set the poster equal to our poster.jpg file. And we would expect to see that in the web browser prior to the playback of the video. However, we don't see that. And the reason is because the poster will continue to display as long as the video is downloading, downloading, downloading from, uh, from, its, uh, from its target web server. And 
because we're running this video locally, it loads into memory instantly off of our computer's hard drive. So we don't see the poster in that case. But if we were to upload this video to a server and then try to download it, we would see maybe for two, three, four, five seconds, however long it takes to download the video, that our poster image would appear, okay? Uh, and I think, let me think for a moment here, I think that's all that I really wanted to say about this for now. Um, I would just invite you to try different combinations and learn a little bit more about this. Um, as I note, uh, there's no video codec format in the, in the specification. Um, Internet Explorer supports the very popular H.264 codec that typically is encoded in .mov or .mp4 movies. Apple also supports this. Um, and then also I want to talk about that uh, the video player currently only supports progressive downloads. So this is where you have a file sitting on the file system on some remote server and you're just downloading incrementally portions of the file. The file has been organized for this purpose so it puts the video information chronologically so you can begin to play the video while it's downloading. But that's different from having a media server serving up video that allows you to skip ahead and skip back on the timeline. If you were to try to skip ahead with a progressive download and the information hasn't yet downloaded in the video, uh, you'll just sit there and wait and wait and wait for the video to uh, continue to download. So just be aware of that, that you're working with progressive or pseudo streaming. You're not working with true streaming that would require a media server. So you're not using um, uh, protocols that are common to streaming like RTMP and its various uh, formats of, as I've noted here. And then also there's no digital rights management. So if somebody comes to your video file and they wanna save it to their desktop, all they have to do is right click and choose save as. Uh, if you were to use true streaming, there would be no way to do that, uh, at least no easy way to do that, to, uh, to pull all the stream bytes together and assemble them in a file and save it onto the local hard drive. All right, so just wanted you to be aware of the difference there. Okay, so uh, to finish up, to really utilize the video element, you'll probably want to script the control using, or the element, using JavaScript. It'll allow you to programmatically change the playback experience, change the, uh, the controls that you see appearing at the bottom, uh, to sync the playback of the video with other on-page interactions, maybe um, text that'll be shown, uh, hidden or, or shown on the web page, and so on as the video is playing back, which is really neat. And so again, after you master uh, HTML5, move on to JavaScript, learn about that, and then there are plenty of great resources on the internet that can explain to you how you can create a rich interactive experience using JavaScript with the video element. All right, thank you, we'll see you in the next video.